the tube's design lets us squeeze out the product and yet still read the fine print on the twisted package. Artists first used flexible metal containers for their paints back in 1841. Nowadays, we use them for products like glue, skin cream and toothpaste. Remember, don't leave the top off. These packaging tubes are made of aluminium because it's affordable, lightweight and malleable. This company makes each tube from an aluminium slug. A batch of slugs are dumped into a container and a lubricating powder called zinc sterate is added. The container spins, causing the powder to coat the slugs evenly and prepare the metal for stretching later on. The slugs then spin around in another container which aligns them horizontally so they'll fit through a channel at the bottom. The channel feeds the slugs into a forming press. In a process called impact extrusion, each slug moves onto a die which gives it the exterior shape of a tube, including the neck. At the same time, a mandrel forms the interior. This process hardens the metal, something that will be corrected later on. The machine applies 200 tonnes of pressure to as many as 150 slugs per minute. They can be as narrow as 1 centimetre and as long as 22 centimetres. This machine uses compressed air to align the tubes for the next step. A trimming machine cuts threads into the necks by passing each one between two synchronised rollers. Stationary blades trim the top of the neck, making the surface smooth and safe to handle. The neck on most models remains sealed until the consumer pierces it. Another company eventually seals the tube by rolling up the other end, after the product has been inserted. After they've been heated in order to soften the metal, the tubes move through another machine. Nozzles spray the inside with two coats of epoxy lacquer. This creates a protective barrier between the aluminium and the eventual contents. Rollers apply a coat of polyester enamel paint, which is flexible when dry and resistant to most solvents and sun damage. Grippers place the tubes on long pins, which move them through an oven for seven minutes so the paint can dry. From there, it's off to the printing machine. Each tube makes one complete rotation against a printing plate. The plate applies a coloured image and information that describes the tube's contents. Then, they go back into the oven to dry the ink. The printing's legible even when twisted because the polyester ink remains flexible. Another machine applies a kilo of torque to screw on the plastic caps. Most of the caps have pointy tops used to pierce the sealed neck of the tube. They use flat caps to close off tubes with open necks. On the next machine, nozzles spray on a strip of latex sealant inside the open end of the tube. The latex is like a gasket. After the product is inserted, it seals the tube when the end is folded over. After a machine packs boxes with an average of 300 tubes each, the inside of every tube is inspected. A bright spotlight reveals any chips in the paint that makes the packaging deficient. About one in every 500 tubes is flawed. A sheet of sticky paper over the open ends of the tubes keeps them from twisting during shipping. And a label on the box provides tracking information and a way to show off if someone has tampered with it en route. then these tubes will leave the factory. And so will we, because that's all the information we could squeeze out of them.